Let me start out with a number, because what did, no, you know, um, numbers are the language of business, some people say. Okay. So let's start with 100. <clears throat> okay? As there are number. Our number is 100. So I want to have a show of hands, listen to my questions first, and then I want you to make a choice. I'm going to give you two versions of 100. You're an accounting guy, right? What's that? You're an accounting guy? Uh, no, just computer scientist. Oh, but you understand accounting? Yeah. Okay. So this should be real easy for you and everyone else, too. Um, so, would you rather have 100 likes on your Facebook page? Or, I mean, when you get back to your business tomorrow or Friday or Monday, wherever you're going, would you rather have 100 likes on your Facebook page or 100 sales? How many want 100 likes? 100. How many sales. want 100 sales? <laughs> OK. That's what direct marketing is about. And it may sound silly, but um, a lot of people who will try to, your founders, right? A lot of the marketing people coming your way are going to be trying to tell you that you need social media and you need exposure and you need, you know, branding and you need this and those are all good things. But without sales, uh, the number I've heard is uh, 19 out of 20 businesses fail after five years, new businesses. And I don't know the reason. I'm not an expert on business failure. But I do know one reason a lot of them fail is because they don't get sales and um, sort of implicitly they're trying to go after likes. And I don't literally just mean likes on a Facebook page. I mean they put all of their money into getting a fancy office and really good business cards and great design and perfect colors for their branding. Uh, am I allowed to use foul language here? Or is it? Yeah. Sure. No? I got five dollars here. No way. All right. um, and nobody freaking cares. Uh, so let me uh, let me tell you a story. Interesting story. I got this in the mail yesterday. Anyone ever see one of these? It's a Hammaker Schlemmer catalog. Oh yeah, I love those. Okay. Yeah. So how many people know the history? No. The I had to look it up on Wikipedia this morning. I didn't. Um, <laughs> 1847, a couple of people, neither of whom were named Hammaker or Schlemmer, started a department store in a district of New York, of Manhattan, called the Bower. Not the greatest place. And um, did pretty well. And maybe about five years later, a family friend named um, either Hammaker or Schlemmer put $5,000 in the business. And this is back in the 1800s. And a business is a hardware store, very profitable, very successful. And in the late 1800s, they put out a catalog. And they start mailing it. The largest catalog is over a thousand pages, like the old Sears Robots catalog. Um, so years pass, years pass. They become very successful. They're mailing the catalogs. This, this is their storefront on 57th Avenue between Lexington and 3rd Avenue in Manhattan. In, I can't remember the year now. Oh, yeah, I remember the year. 1998, Mayor Rudy Giuliani names the block 57th Street between Lexington and, and Third Avenue, Hammaker Schlemmer Way. Uh, and you know what Donald Trump said when that happened? How can I get Rudy to name a block in Manhattan after me? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's true or not. <laughs> but, but based on what's happened, he may have that opportunity. So, um, you know, the question you might want to ask is, how did this end up in my mailbox? Uh, did they just say, oh, we think we'd like to send one of these to David Garfinkel in San Francisco. He's a nice guy, he wears a funny hat, he has a beard. No, that's not why. The reason is I bought some stuff from them. I don't remember why, but I like gadgets. 
Anyone else like gadgets? I love gadgets. Yeah. And they have some of the neatest gadgets in the world. They even have a lab that's like independent entity to test the gadgets. What kind of gadgets do they have? They have uh, the cordless reading lamp, um, the NASA sleep promoting light bulb, uh, <laughs> the only automatic cordless tire inflate, and on and on and on. If you guys know, if not, you can find them on the web. So I bought one thing, then I think I bought a few others. So what had I just done to them? Anybody know? I had identified myself as a customer. Mm -hmm. And what were they doing as they keep sending me the catalog? They're trying to maximize my value to them as a customer. Now, it might sound like they're trying to take advantage of me, but never once did anyone from Hemmaker Schlemmer come to me with a 38 cold cock saying you must buy. <laughs> it was all my choice. I want to. I, I, I hesitate to read that thing in the bathroom because I'm afraid I'm going to buy something else. <laughs> but I'll like it, so it's not really that bad. So that's direct marketing. That's direct marketing. They found a customer who likes what they sold. They had figured out what a certain group of people known as a market would like and they found a way, a system, a series of steps to go through to sell to those people and once they bought to sell to them again. Now, would you like to do that with your business? Yes. Yes, yes. yes. okay. Show us how. Yeah. Okay, good. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. And um, I'll, I'll be very transparent. Um, Mark and I have known each other for a long time, but we haven't been in touch that much. And he contacted me and said, you like to speak here? And I said, yeah, this was Monday. <laughs> so I said, could you help me a little bit? And he said, yeah, here's four questions. So I've, I've thought about the answers to these questions. He said that this would be good for this group. I think they're good. The first question already started to answer, why is direct marketing so important? And here's why. It's the one form of marketing that gives you control over your growth. And this is really what sets it apart from everything else. It gives you measurable results. There is a very scientific aspect to direct marketing in the empirical version of science where, like the rockets with NASA, where you try something, you see what happens. If it works, maybe you try and refine it, but you do more of it. If it doesn't work, okay, that didn't work. Let's not do that again, right? Um, it's a system. Direct marketing is a system. It has a series of steps. I'll go through those steps a little later. But I, I really believe in systems. And um, systems can be very complicated. But let me give you a very simple system just to, I like supplements, a lot of nutritional supplements. And I was finding I wasn't taking all of them. But when I went, you know, uh, on a trip, my girlfriend would pack them in these little two by three inch bags. And I said, would, could, would you, could you do that while I'm at home? And now I just have to pick one bag. And so every day I'll have this bag in the morning of the brain supplements, this bag in the morning of the vitamin supplements, and this bag in the afternoon of the brain supplements. That's a system. Anybody read Scott Adams' book, How to Fail at Almost Everything and Still Be a Wild Success? Fantastic book. He says, goals are for losers. Because if you achieve a goal, then what? And if you don't achieve a goal, you think there's something wrong with you. And the fact is, you don't have any control of, over that. But you do have control over your behavior. And a system is a very efficient way of organizing behavior. Whether it's your behavior, your business behavior, or computer's behavior. Okay. So direct marketing is a system. You can build it, modify it, optimize it. And anyone here know the tornado? The, the Silicon Valley book by Jeff Moore, yeah. the tornado. Yeah. It's when all of a sudden your growth goes like that, vertical, like a tornado. Totally everything's out of control. Direct marketing is the best way to handle the sales and uh, record keeping portion of your business. Now, direct marketing won't handle everything. It won't handle motivating teams. It won't handle strategy, but it'll handle that. And so you can scale. And later on, I'm going to tell you about businesses that have scaled very fast. 
as, as recently as the last couple of months that I've worked with using direct marketing. Okay, any financial guys here? Okay, so do you know what non-dilutive capital is? Yeah. Could you define it? Because it's a new word for non, me. Well, non-dilutive capital? I should um, pass. Go ahead. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. I, I heard it from two Silicon Valley guys. I'm not even sure this is uh, technically a uh, financial term. So if you got a business, you need money. Mm -hmm. um, you might have it, might not have enough. So how do you get money? Well, I think there's three ways. You can get investors, uh, you can get a loan, or you can fund the growth of the business through revenue. And the nice thing about revenue is, is it's non-dilutive. On your balance sheet, you still own 100% and there's no extra debt. Mm -hmm. Direct marketing is a way to create non-dilutive capital for your business. So that's pretty cool, huh? Thanks. And um, can you can you explain that again? I didn't quite understand. Like, why is that compared with other things? Second? Well, okay. So you don't have any partners after you made all the money. You so so, so you still so you don't have the Winklevoss problem. Winklevoss oh, okay, problem. Okay, got it. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Capital. Yeah. Okay. So I'm wearing a hat. No one else is wearing a hat. Yeah. You are. <laughs> All right, we got one other hat wearing. But if you're a startup people, your hats are invisible, but you're wearing about 57 of them, right? <laughs> All right. Um, and that's cool, and that's the way it works. And, and that's probably why many entrepreneurs are not particularly good corporate managers, because corporate managers have to be focused more on wearing one hat, because it's a different personality type, mm -hmm. different strength. When you're wearing your 57 hats, you want your marketing to work as hard as you do. And there are a lot of forms of marketing. Not only is it, you don't even know. You don't even know if it's working hard or not. With direct marketing, you can measure everything. You can literally say, okay, I was working with an author yesterday, and she said, and she's launching, she said, well, we spent $13 on ads and we made $15 in profit. Now, if you go to Hachette or Random House or whoever, whatever the names of the publisher, they don't know, <laughs> but she does. Wow. And I can guarantee you she's going to be making seven figures a year within two years because she's She's really learned direct marketing as well as creating good quality product. Okay, so, so, so that's she's got an orbital campaign. What's that? She's got an orbital campaign, which she's actually bringing more profit than it costs to do the campaign. So how long, how often, how long could she do that campaign? Uh, forever? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I'll, I'll tell her that. She'll like that. That's good. An orbital campaign. I love that phrase. Okay. So what is direct marketing? So uh, some of you may know it inside out. Some of you may know, it's, some of you may have some misconceptions about it. Uh, obviously, when Hammaker Schlemmer sends me that catalog, that's direct marketing. It's direct because it's coming from them to me. And they can look up my customer record, and at a certain point they say, David's not buying enough. It's, you know, it's no longer orbital. We're going we're gonna to take them off the list. And I would be happy too, because you know, I enjoy looking at it, but mainly to buy stuff, not to dream about buying stuff. Okay. Uh, so, so what is direct marketing? Well, direct marketing does these things for you, and first thing is it helps you get leads. It helps you get qualified leads. Qualified leads are the people who are predisposed to buy what you sell. Um, you ever have anybody come up to you and say, you know, I have an email list for you, and you buy a thousand names, and you do everything in the world, and all you get is spam complaints. Stop sending me your blank, blank, blank emails. They're not qualified leads. Qualified leads actually want to know about what you're offering. That's the definition of qualified lead. And they can afford it, and they'd be willing to buy it. Okay. Actually, I, I skipped. The first thing is positioning, which is, all right, so 
Starbucks. There's a Starbucks coffee I got in the hotel. They're positioned in a certain way. They're kind of creating community and hugging trees and being fair to the earth and all that. Um, then there's Dunkin' Donuts coffee, which some people say is better than Starbucks. But Starbucks is like nothing compared to some of the boutique coffees in San Francisco now, like Blue Bottle and Phil's Coffee. Oh, you go to Phil's Coffee and it's a show. They mix this stuff up and swirl it and tell you stuff and they charge you a little more than Starbucks too. But um, so, or, or you can do like I do. I like to assert my senior rights. I'm over 55, so I go to McDonald's and say, I'd like a senior coffee. That's me asserting my senior <laughs> rights. And I get a coffee for less than a buck. And it's not as good as that, but it's good. So, um, you understand, that's a very simple definition of positioning. You probably had other people talk to you about it. Is positioning branding yes and no? Um, By the way, just a quick side note on that. We talked about yesterday was using an orbital campaign to go to 1,000 of a million person market. And now you've systematically got the piggyback value of branding while you were doing the direct marketing. Maybe. You, you and I are great minds. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, yeah, my, my opinion of branding is branding comes from sales and satisfied customers, and especially in this social era, and by social, I mean social media, the comments they make about you on Facebook or on Amazon, that's your branding. Your branding to me is the, a feeling and a relationship as expressed in words between you, your company, and your customers. That's what branding is. Now, when you're a huge company like Walmart, the rules are different maybe, um, and so they will say things like lowest prices always, or whatever they're saying today, and, and branding is a promise, and if you can make an appealing promise that appeals to people, great, but it's kind of putting the cart before the horse to focus on that before you have customers and a way to get more customers that's orbital as opposed to an expense. Okay, so you get the leads and direct marketing can create sales for you. How? Through copy. We'll talk about copy a little later, but let me, let me give you a couple of quick definitions of copy. Um, the first one is, I think that copy is any words that Prompt, that prompt or convince or persuade people to take action. So when Amy was asking us to do this, those words were, I'm sorry I didn't close my eyes, but that was fine. Um, okay. um, those words were copy. Okay, she, that in my definition. Now many people think of copy in a much narrower sense, like you know, copy is the words that create sales, and that's true, but creating a sale is inducing someone to take an action. But then we were talking about emotion. So I have a, another definition, which is not um, contradictory, but complementary, and that is copy is a way of communicating that speaks to the emotional part of the brain in a way that makes sense to the logical part of the brain. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you. Now, both parts are important. Because you can get someone really excited, but then do they believe you? Does it make sense? Or, and this is the problem, especially analytical people, um, intellectual people, technical people have, you can have something that makes sense, but it's not emotionally exciting, and you need emotion to create the motion to pull out the credit card <laughs> to get them to type it in. Those are emotions. Okay, so you need both. And they need to line up. So once you get a customer, that should not be the end of the story. Um, I can tell you this is not the first cup of Starbucks coffee I've had, and it's not going to be the last. And it's not even my favorite coffee. I, I like Pete's coffee much better, but I like it. So that's, that's called retention. And what it means is you're retaining the customer, which that's sort of a static thing, retention. It means that they keep buying. It's really an action thing. 
they buy from you more than once, more than twice, to close the customer attention. Direct marketing can do that for you. There are specific things you can do that work. And then, there's maximizing the customer value. So, let's say that today, I, um, I lost control and um, I thought, well, today is the third anniversary of my mother's passing, and here's a nice rosarium archway bench. It's only $249. I think I'll order it. Um, they're really increasing my customer value. And if it's the last thing I buy from them, then they have maximized my customer value. Mm -hmm. But you can be sure if I spend $249, they're going to be working really hard. It's going to be worth, you know, $50 or $100 worth more catalogs and special offers and maybe even a phone call from the great great grand nephew of <laughs> Mr. Hammond or South. Oh, David, so thank you, thank you so much for it. Right? Who knows? Oh, okay. Okay. Now, when, I, when, I do, when I do a strategy session with anybody, what we do is we do a SWOT analysis. You guys know that? SWOT. Um, uh, SWOT. SWOT. Uh, strengths. Strengths, weaknesses, opportunity, thank you. <laughs> and uh, threats. And you know, obviously in one hour you can't go through all of them, but we, we pick what's most important and point that out. Because if you're missing any one of these, you're not going to be making the money you could be, even at the stage of the business. Now, do you have to have them perfect? No. Do you want the rocket to blow up? No. So you want to find somewhere in between perfect and the rocket blows up. Okay? Um, I'm talking a lot, throwing a lot of ideas to do questions. Just ask me or I'll keep going. This is great. Okay. Thank you. All right. So let's see what else. Um, Direct marketing, again, it's like putting your marketing materials on payroll and having them earn their keep. It's like having an employee is actually productive, okay? And the, the neat thing about direct marketing, if you are an analytical, rational person, which half of the time I am, um, is it's the most scientific and leveraged form of marketing. Um, and yet, it combines that with the very emotional aspects of persuasion. So, we'll, we'll get into how that works now. Um, how does it work? I probably ought to write this up here um, because it's it's uh, worth worth taking down. This is different from the way a lot of people do things. This is how I advise all my clients to do things, and um, the smart ones do. So uh, I'll read what is the first it? marker. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You got it. Oh, we've got a bunch of them here. I just yeah. don't know where. Maybe I threw it back in here. You can use pink. What's that? Is it the pink <clears> one <throat> in there? The pink one's in there. I know, but pink is your color. <laughs> That's your branding. I, I could do it though. Okay, so you start with a customer. No, you don't start with a customer group. You don't start with the whole world. You start with one. Hopefully not you. Someone that has a problem. A problem, okay? Now, this is, some parts of direct marketing are a little difficult for entrepreneurs and people who are into personal growth and things like that because we deal with negativities. And we train ourselves not to think about, you know, you can't afford the luxury of a single negative thought. I generally agree with that, but you're selling to people who have them all the time, yeah. okay? <laughs> so you need to at least acknowledge them. You don't want to wallow in them. Now, you want to have a customer has a problem that they're aware of. Uh, if I can pick on you for a second, pain. Okay, moving around, that's a problem. And if someone came up with a solution that was different and better and more in your value system, you'd probably be interested, right? And so would everyone else here. Thanks for letting me say the out there. Um, okay, um, so not only a problem, but a problem that they're aware of. Not only that they're aware of, but that you or your product or your company or your team can solve. All right? Because if you can't help them with it, then they can't become a customer. Not only that, and this, this is the key part which a lot of people miss out on, you need to be able to solve it uniquely and valuably. Uniquely and valuably. So, Let's go back to my silly example, that's Starbucks. 
I could get this inside of a couple of minutes right in the lobby. That was valuable and unique. I couldn't, I couldn't get a Phil's coffee. I don't really like Phil's, so I couldn't get a Pete's coffee, okay? So that was unique and valuable to me. Now, is it the most valuable coffee in the world? No, there's, you know, the Jamaican and the Hawaiian blue, and then there's the one that goes through a rodent, which I don't even like. Okay, mm -hmm. they're all those things. But at this time, <laughs> what is that? <laughs> you heard of that one, haven't you? Oh, yeah, let's not go there. Okay, so now you've got a customer with a problem, and now, and this may seem backwards, but you create a product or service that uniquely and valuably solves the problem, and then you have, you have a problem. Sorry, you have a problem. Your problem is, is there a market? See, I don't believe you should start out selling anything to the world. I think if you can sell to one person, you may be able to sell to millions. But if you try to sell a million, you'll never be able to sell a one. The very personal, that's the whole emotional part. You need to really understand what the person's issue is, their pain, their problem, and see if that person would buy it. And then see, and there may be intermediary steps where you try this in a group of small groups, you give it away, you have people try it. But ultimately, there needs to be a market. Now, what's a market? A market is a collection of people who have the problem, the same problem, and they're willing to spend money to solve it, and they like your, and they, they would like your solution if they knew about it. Okay, so they have a market. Now, let's say fail. Yeah, it's okay. You can't, I, everyone ever hear Stella Adler? Great acting coach in New York. And she was talking to somebody uh, about another actor, and she said, I think he's a great success, and the person said, no, he's not. And she said, really, why not? She said, because he's never failed. And it's true. You, you're going you're gonna to try something. It's not all going to be sunshine and roses. There, there are going to be problems. But the failures, as, as direct marketers, we don't look at them as failures. We say that was a test, and not even a test that didn't work. That was a test, and these are the results. The rocket blew up. Oh, okay, so... Maybe we should put a little more nitrogen and a little less hydrogen in the fuel. Okay. So if you don't find the market, then you need to go back and start over. Now, the nice thing about this is this is before, if, if you're doing the traditional venture capital kind of thing, this is before you go to the VC. This is where you do your proof of concept. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when... Um, when you get the thumbs up, <laughs> um, then you can go to the next step, and that is create marketing messages. Now, the, these aren't like McDonald's's marketing message, I'm loving it. No, th these are like specific invitations that call out to a person who's having a problem and saying, and, and inducing them to explore, learn about, invite you to solution. Now, a lot of people think of direct marketing as very hard sell. Probably the best copywriter I know of was a guy named Eugene Schwartz, wrote a book called Breakthrough Advertising. And in a very rare <coughs> talk that I, I heard um, a recording of where he spoke to Rodell, the, the giant uh, alternative health publisher, he said that we're not selling anything. Think of it as shop windows. We're simply showing people things. And for some, I wouldn't recommend this for everyone, but for some people, they would simply send the product risk-free, and if you liked it, you would pay for it. These days, the chance of getting ripped off is often too big to do that, but there are other ways to uh, get the same effect. He says, we're, they're just shop windows. People can go by, they take a look at it. So that's what the marketing message does. It, it's, it, it's a very specific, um, attention getter that gets them into a sales presentation. And then you start expanding the exposure of the marketing messages. And you can do that through strategic alliances, like 
is an expert on where you'll get affiliates to mail, you can put up ads on Google, um, you can put ads on Facebook. There are a lot of ways you can expand and you get the person into that funnel I was talking about before where they become leads and then over a process they become customers and then you get them to buy again, you retain them, and then you maximize the value. Um, and then here's the beauty of direct marketing that you can develop systems and automate those systems. So you can have your sales on autopilot. It's not instant, it's not overnight, but it is for real and it can work and it does work. Okay, so the um, question is, you know, what if you did something like this, what could happen? I'm going to say one thing about that. Because, sure. Because it's really important. Yeah. So for fast growing companies, one of the issues, you mentioned the tornado thing mm -hmm. and all that, is that what happens is if you run into, uh, where did he go, Chardul? Anyway, okay, Chardul is in a situation where he's got more sales than he's got yeah. capacity. So now he finds himself doing the creative work and all that stuff with his partners and team because they're all gone. What happens is with direct marketing, you stop it. Mm -hmm. You right. stop it mm -hmm. for a month, a week, a day, two days, whatever it is. And as soon as you're ready, turn it back on again. Where a lot of types of advertising, it's not that you get you planned it three months in advance, the ads coming out, you know, you got whatever. Right. Yeah, and that's and that's an issue of control too. I mean, the, the nice thing about direct marketing is it gives you control. It, it, you know, I think entrepreneurs, a lot of people who aren't us, think that we're just money grubbing sons of bitches, and I don't think that's true. I, I think, and actually, we, we talked about this. I think I think having freedom and control over your life is usually usually. A much higher value. Now, clearly, the media is going to celebrate the the bad apples in any group, and so you always hear about these, you know, the insane guy who's charging I don't know ten thousand or hundred thousand dollars for a pill. For you know, I mean, that's not usual. That most of us aren't like that. But what it does is it gives you control. Um, actually, the the first uh, brief example I wanted to give you was a client of mine named Stefan. He's in Eastern Europe. I'm going to be a little vague here because I want to protect his competitive advantage. I'm always very confidential about my clients till I have permission. He was in one business. I started working with him, mentoring him, and his girlfriend's family is in a different business, or actually his fiance, I think, is in a different, his family's in a different business that in this country is very well established, but in his country, because they were a Soviet bloc nation until, you know, the Berlin Wall came down, uh, is, is relatively new. And he just put up a website and created a system using what he already knew and some things I helped him with. And they have a thousand leads for this product. They had to hire two new people. They, they still aren't sure they can handle it. So he can just turn off the advertising. But that can happen. I'm talking about the course of two months. I'm talking about a business that can easily, and all he has to do is deliver the leads, easily bring him 300000 and his wife $300,000 a year, which in Eastern European money is more like a million dollars a year. And uh, I'm sort of directive when I work with my people, so I said, Stefan, I want you to document everything. I want you to make sure you own the intellectual property, and then I want you to go to a neighboring country, but I don't want you to uh, share profits. I want you to sell the leads. And once you know how much those leads bring on average, you can sell them for 10% of that and make a fortune. And then I want you to do it again and again, because there are a lot of Eastern European countries where mm -hmm. that would work. So that's one example of what you can do in direct marketing, okay? What's another one? Um, I had a client in New York who was in the merchant processing business. You know what that is? That's, that's credit cards. Now, this was before PayPal and Square and Stripe and all those things. This was this is a while back where you know you couldn't snap your fingers and, and get a merchant account. And 
he was a good guy. He was really, really annoyed about all the hidden fees and the balloon rates that merchants would get. They'd get in, and all of a sudden they're paying $700 for a terminal and this and that. But he was a businessman and not a self-promoter. So he was a little shy about telling people this. And I said, no, I, I need you to get angry, Michael. I need you to actually, I, I need to get a, a, a recording of you talking about how merchants are being ripped off and how you're not going to stand for that. And he had a free terminal. His business, he met his um, three-year growth goal in 10 months. Uh, just his, his AdWords ads performed at about 300 percent. In other words, the cost to acquire a new customer was down about 67 percent from what everyone else is paying. That's what you can do with direct marketing. Okay. And third one is very... He, I didn't quite follow. What did he do? He, he would provide he, merchant accounts so you can process credit cards. cards. He's a merchant card uh, uh, provider. Yes, exactly. Yes. Um, and the third one, I'll just tell you, uh, his name is Big Mike Stromatis. He's big. He's like 6'10". And he has a company called Advanced Nutrients. They make hydroponics. Anyone know what hydroponics yeah. are used for? Yeah. Sure. yeah. Or, or even if you're growing, a, maybe it's not a vegetable, maybe it's an herb. An herb yeah. <laughs> he, he had, Medicinal plants? Huh? Medicinal. A medicinal plant, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Or a recreational plant. Yeah. So, in, um, he has a company, it's based in Vancouver, Wash, uh, Vancouver, BC, Canada. Uh, they're in 23 countries, customers, they have uh, manufacturing facilities in four countries. Um, he was a very unusual situation. He came to me and wanted to learn how to write advertising copy, which I'm an expert at teaching people in. And I said, sure. And there's a guy, I don't think he has any problem with me telling you this, didn't even finish high school. He became a world-class copywriter. He just busted his butt. But he didn't stop there. Then he started bringing his team in. He rehired me for another contract, brought his team in. Then he did something without me, which I'm really proud of him for. He instilled a whole direct marketing culture in his company, which was, much more technical, scientific based, and much more, because he was selling to dealers, much more traditional factory, um, what do you call it, uh, factory rep based. But he, he did that, and he told me that the work we did together added five million in profit, mm -hmm. profit Aww. to his business. <clears throat> and he, he's one of my favorite people, um, and one of my favorite clients. And one of the reasons is, is what he did with it. Another is because he worked so hard. Another because he's just a great guy and he's fun to hang out with. Lives a very adventurous and exciting life. So um, Mark said that I could offer any of you a one-hour strategy session that they should talk to you. Yes. And, and Mark will set that up. Um, and in the strategy session, if you like um, to have one, we can look at your business wherever it is right now, whether it's, you know, whether you're already doing direct